Hello, I'm Russell Preston Brown from Adobe Systems, and I'm here on the beautiful California coast. Wow, what an amazing day. And I'm here to demonstrate some tips and techniques for creating a panorama from the sky, an aerial panorama using some of today's latest technology to go into the sky with small, lightweight cameras and take a photograph and then I'm going to demonstrate how to stitch these photographs together inside of Adobe Photoshop CC. Now, let's take a look at these two aircraft sitting here in front of me. My first aircraft here to the right is a self-contained DJI Phantom II Vision Copter. It comes self-contained with a camera and I use my iPhone for the display of the images that transmit back to my receiver. It's a really nice bundled package for doing aerial photography. And to remind you once again, I'm talking about taking photographs from the sky, not video. My second setup here is a GoPro Hero 3, and it's connected to a Phantom. And um, you will also notice that I had to put on some additional equipment on top of the Phantom to stabilize it slightly, and a transmitter which will transmit the picture back. I'm pointing this out in that I have to do some wiring and soldering to make this come together. On top of that, I need to purchase a separate monitor, and this separate monitor then receives the signal. So this is a kit that you have to put together yourself but I really think seeing the picture while you're capturing the panorama is essential. So two setups, a GoPro and then this Phantom with the camera built in. Okay, today's project I'm actually going to be photographing with the Phantom 2 Vision as you see here. Now before I take off though, I always go through a checklist of things to prepare for this project. The first mistake that many users make is that their blades go flying off into space because they haven't tightened those blades really, really accurately. So before you take off, check to make sure your blades are securely tightened onto the device. And next, and most important, check your batteries before takeoff. How many times have I gotten into the air and found that I'm flying with a dead battery? I always have a battery checker with me, especially out here on the beautiful coast where I can check this to make sure I'm going to get the shots. Then finally, I've never made this mistake, turn your camera on before takeoff. <laughs> These days, because I'm connected to a transmitter and I'm actually seeing my image, in many cases I know that it's, it's turned on, but there are occasions where I fly without a monitor and I want to make sure that I turn it on. And I should point that out, these two configurations have a monitor for viewing the image, but you do not need to see the image to create a great panorama. Simply connect your GoPro camera to a Phantom, take it up into the sky, move it around, and get some great, great shots. Okay, let's get into the sky and show you this process. I want to show you my patented technique for taking the perfect panorama from the sky. Let's set this one down to the side. Okay, we're almost ready for takeoff. Of course, I've gone through my checklist. I've made sure that my blades are on nice and tight. I wouldn't want those to go flying off. I've checked my battery level and I've turned on my camera. Now, before I take off though, I want to demonstrate my patented technique for taking panoramas in the sky. Now remember that I have two different types of panoramas. I like a little bit of an angle down and a horizontal, but essentially when you photograph those, I use the same technique here on my radio to achieve those results that I can then stitch together back inside of Photoshop. This is how it works. What I want to do is adjust the yaw of my camera and the copter. And that's done with this controller right here. I'm going to place one thumb right here. And that's the patented thumb, by the way. I position it there as a stopper so that when I move the controller to the left, I have a point in which I can stop right there. 
it just gives me a point to push to. If I didn't have that, you would push it too far. And I find that if I place my thumb there and I give this a push, it then rotates the camera about a 40% overlap between each of the images I take from the sky. And that works really well. Photoshop does a great job of blending those together. And that's the secret here, and that's what I wanted to really point out today. A little bit of a stopper, and then it rotates in the sky, like this. Now, when you're hovering in the sky, you have your GPS lock on. You've got the satellites controlling it, but it actually will move a little bit in the sky as you rotate because of wind and rotation, but it tries to come back to the center. I find that when I'm taking a panorama, it may move off of center, but when I stitch the panorama back together again, it still works quite well because we're so far away from our objects that the central pivoting point doesn't matter so much. So again, I'm rotating around each rotation, and I find that with this technique that I get about 11 different images after I'm done. Sometimes I don't need all of those images. Sometimes I need just half of those images. And you know what else? If my central location is, for example, off to this direction, I will start photographing from here, use my technique to rotate it to the next position, because when I'm inside of Photoshop, I want a nice sequence that gives me the full pan. Now I can reorder the images inside of Photoshop, but it's nice to have a continuous sequence as you go around. Now I am photographing with the time-lapse mode of one frame every two seconds. That way it's continuously shooting them. But when I get to a point within the shot, I, the wind is blowing this a little bit. I usually stop and let it capture at least two frames before moving on. Those are the basics. If you can move your fingers like this, then you can take a panorama. I'm going to go ahead and take off now and get up into the sky. It's a great day. I'm going to take a panorama. I'm going to make sure my camera is turned on. It's shooting the sequence for me now. And I'm going to go ahead and take off here and get into the sky. Before I take off, be sure and watch my continuing series here on Adobe TV that will demonstrate the techniques for stitching these images together. Give it a try.